Good, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. What question do you have? What do you want to talk about? Okay, so I'm a freshman at a kind of a mid-tier to kind of shit-tier university uh, in okay. computer science. Um, and so I've been watching your videos. Uh, I have an internship in, uh, it's like in a construction uh, management company in, okay. in, uh, in Texas. So I've been doing that for like a year, year and a half. Um, I've been really enjoying it. But uh, and I thought I was kind of like, I, I'm not gonna lie, I had a little bit of like a, okay, damn, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. And then I started watching your videos and I was like, shit, bro. Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> These people are fucking cooked. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And like, I feel like I'm like, might, might be on their level. I mean, I'm a freshman, you know? So it's like, I, I haven't really had like a lot of formal education. But uh, yeah. like, my real question is like, how do I set myself up so I don't get cooked? Because like, I'm not, yeah. I don't have too much confidence in my college classes to teach me, uh, you know, what I need to know. Yeah. I think the that's it's really good that you're coming to that realization by watching these videos. I think that's the first step because there's two types of people. There's people that watch the videos and then they get like butt hurt by the fact that they don't know the answer and they brush it off yeah. as like, oh, you're egotistical. And if people think I'm egotistical, wait till they meet their next, you know, interviewer. Yeah. they're going to be asking them tough questions and it doesn't matter what you think of the interviewer it's either you pass the question or you don't so you can sit there and cry and blah 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 okay so and then there's the other person like you that says well i don't know the answer and i don't want to be that person because I, that's um, kind of embarrassing in the sense that somebody asks you a question and it's very simple and you don't know and um, what i would do is to me you you can't rely on your professor to teach you everything professors are kind of like government bureaucrats they're there, they collect their check, they do some research, they live in this comfy little land and they're in you know, mm -hmm. their own bubble that they built. What I recommend is the books on my channel. So if you're a software engineering student, there's a couple of like course uh, concepts you're gonna need to master. There's operating systems, concurrency, databases, networking. Networking includes middleware. Middleware is stuff like gRPC, REST APIs, WebSockets, et cetera. And design patterns. And maybe one or two more. I have a touch, a touch a lot of it on my channel, but effectively you're going to need to pick up those books and just read them in your own leisure outside of school. You're just going to need yeah. to read them, maybe read a couple of pages a day, maybe a chapter a day. And it's nice. It's, you know, it's, it's comforting. Hopefully it's not, you don't feel like it's a slog, like you're kind of forced to do it. To me, it's enjoyable because I feel like I'm learning a lot and I'm growing professionally. And I feel like I'm going to be a step up relative to my competition. But, um, and the, I just find the topics interesting as well. So that's what I would effectively do. Um, are you in like, what, what do you, what programming language are you learning the most? For my job, I, uh, I do like uh, AWS stuff. So in the, um, okay. in my lambdas, I'm coding in uh, like Python. I've, I've done a little bit like, uh, I, like, you know, I've done JSON, like I mainly like create JSONs for the Python code and it reads it. And then I do a little bit of like, you know, actual creating the uh, like AWS sort like resources, like in the YAML files okay. and all that. Done a little bit of that, but mainly uh, Python. My uh, classes at university are C++. Um, cool. So um, but okay. my, my like secondary question is, um, like I, I know a lot of like developers, they kind of go into CS because it's like, oh, trying to make the bank, right? And like, yeah. then, I'm not gonna lie, the bank is nice. I enjoy CS a lot, like on my own time. Yeah. Uh, I've done like a little bit of game dev shit on like the side. Um, sure. But is it enough to just do like, because I really enjoy it's like side projects and stuff like that. Is that enough? Or do I really need to like, uh, like lock in on like the books and stuff? Um, and that makes sense. so when it comes to the book, somebody asks, where can you find them? So on my website, getcrack.io, I'm going to have like a resources section and you can also find links in the description box of my videos for Python specifically. The reason I asked is because there's a really good book called fluent Python. It's where you can start. I would do a combination of both. So if you enjoy game dev, if the best, the best application of code is coding things that you like, the things that you enjoy. So if you like game, game dev on the side, go for that and maybe lean into it a little more say like, oh, well, you know, I really wanted to think of other ways to inflict damage on a character, for example. Maybe you want to add, maybe you're making a, sh a shooter video game, and instead of the bullets damaging people, you want to add poison over time. So then you think to yourself, well, how can I code that? What's the best way to code like poison bullets where that damage people over time? Right? That's an interesting problem. And then how do I know when I want that timer to stop? As in the person's been poisoned, but I don't want them to be poisoned until they die. I want them poisoned only for the next three seconds. Right? So start small and build from there. I think that is a, a really good foundation too. The books, the books really build the base knowledge. 
you as a developer need to build upon those books with practical like questions and interests that you ask yourself. So the fluent Python, for example, will teach you, you know, Python from the ground up, beginner to advanced, for example. Right. Okay. But then how do you take that and apply it? That's when maybe other books like design patterns come in and then maybe your own little like crafting and figuring out what's going on and, you know, your own little trial and error, essentially. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, one final thing. Uh, I wouldn't call myself like, you know, <laughs> I call them like GPT developers. I think that's like, okay. uh, that's what I call them. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm one of them. Uh, I try to do like, uh, like my side projects and all that stuff. I try to like do it off like my own, my own knowledge and like only use it if I like to like, uh, learn stuff that I haven't known before and like, just like completely yeah. apply it using my own brain. So, uh, but like, I'm not gonna lie. I do use like do you think there's a balance between like what's the balance between using like these resources to like learn things and like having to like know it on your own and like just like have it in your brain? Uh, like, yeah. what do you think the balance is between between them? Good question. So the, my position has always been when you're studying something new, avoid GPT at all costs. When you're trying to figure out what you don't know, then use GPT. You can really okay. use GPT as a great way to ask yourself like more questions about the topic. Like, let's say you just learned about multi-threading. Ask GPT to give you 10 questions about 10 beginner questions about multi-threading and then see, well, do I get them all? Do I not understand them? If you do, that's a good way to like benchmark your progress. I think GPT should literally be banned for people that don't know the topic that they're <laughs> searching. Like if you don't yeah. know, if you don't know about the topic, GPT should be the last thing you touch. So oh, okay. once you have a good familiarity with the topic, use GPT to test whether or not you understand. And then if you, if you see one of those 10 questions, you're like, wait, I don't know the answer. You say, hey, GPT, can you please like elaborate or explain or give me resources to learn about this? That's the best way to use it, in my opinion. Okay. And then to like gain the knowledge at the, at the beginning, like without using GPT, use like books and like uh, resources like that, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. My, uh, that's, bro, like I was having dreams. I was like, man, I don't like... I, the last thing I wanted to hear was like get on a call and like have you say, "Yeah, you're a three out of ten cook, bro. You're 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 done, bro." No, yeah, no, no. So today, <laughs> today's not a. I don't feel like roasting today, so I'm just like uh, being as helpful as possible today. Yeah, yeah. So I really appreciate it. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good one. Cool. See ya.